So this is long overdue. These are the lights we've been using to light the tech channel videos and even some gaming channel videos. You can see the umbrella still has a uh, barf chunks on it. That's from when I did the first Google Pixel unboxing. On top of that, um, see I bring this extension cord right over here. I plug it in and it works. Now it works a lot. Usually it doesn't. Usually the light goes out when the wire is not in a particular way, but it must feel good about itself today. Really? The one time, the one time in the past year, I need to show you how the wires don't work. Solid, great. This light also has a broken umbrella. There you go, see look, boom, boom. Must be held in a specific way in order to work. So luckily uh, via some spread shirt money we made from selling t-shirts, we can finally get some new umbrellas and lights. That's what we're about to find in this box. The time has come to get a traveling bag from our friends at Crappy. Crappy! Sorry. That's how you can tell this isn't sponsored. So I'm guessing this has an umbrella in it. These are slightly different umbrellas. There's our hopefully working power cord, and this expands this way instead, which is better for continuous lighting. Smaller but brighter is the goal. We about, oh, we finna we, find we, out. We finna find out. But yeah, actually I like that they're narrower because it means that, see in the old videos, these would get into the shot easier, whereas these don't it looks more, it, it impose looks, more. The light is also more focused. It looks they can, yeah, it's more directed. Very good. What else did we get? And, wow, I have, what is this? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna pretend smart and go, oh, it's a answer here. It's one of these. But what else? Very nice. An orange Ooh. shoulder rig. We've had blue ones in the past. We've had red ones in the past, but this is the first time we're getting an orange one, which is very cheap and that's okay. It is made of metal though, and it's newer than yours. Newer. This is going to be very heavy, but we'll have a better grip. I, I've been using this style of shoulder rig ever since the EOS T2i, which was about one-tenth the weight of the Black Magic. So you're saying since Hide and Seek? Since Hide and Seek on Talos of Productions. Please check it out. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, Steadiness. Look at it. Much smoother when you have better grip. It's kind of redundant with the Black Magic's, Black Magic's handle there, but that's just so we don't drop it when moving it around. But yeah, you can put a lot of the weight, I think that's too front heavy, but you can put a lot of the weight back on your shoulder and just grip from the sides a lot easier. Results in steadier stuff. I'll just vlog with this now. Yeah, really. <laughs> Why don't we just attach the Black Magic to the gimbal? <laughs> That'll work, right? Yeah, no problem. Just, just slide, it, slide it on there. I can tell these aren't made to go together but we have a budget. We stick to it. They are meant to, but can it? Yes, <laughs> therefore it will. <laughs> so this, ladies and gentlemen, is my first vlog on the Galaxy S9. First clip from a vlog, anyway. Max is out 4K at 60 recording at five minutes, which is bizarre. iPhones can record 4K at 60 as long as the hard drive allows them to. This you gotta stop after five. I thought it was because they said the Snapdragon overheats or something, but right after the five minutes are up, you can hit start again and it just keeps going, which is really stupid. It's kind of like our Lumix cameras not recording more than 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, they just stop and you have to hit go again. This does the same thing after five, which I imagine being annoying for someone like me who likes to do these types of vlogs, or if you're a parent filming like a children's performance, something like that. Might not end well. In other news, some people were asking about this light I have at the top of my iMac, which was sent to me actually by the people at BenQ. Come on, phone, you can focus on that. There you go. It has fairly interesting controls at the top. So not actual buttons, just touch surfaces. So you can tap to bring light on and off. And this actually has a white balance meter. So if I hold this at different levels, it varies color temperature depending on what setting I put it to, which is kind of interesting. Helps me see the keyboard easier, makes for great Instagram shots, but it does kind of show off a lot of the fingerprints you have on your actual display. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it on the iMac Pro. I might move it back to the gaming room. We'll find out. But I commented on this on Instagram. The Galaxy S9 Plus has 
kind of a boring box history, you know? I often say things like, if I didn't have Apple, I could not make the type of content I'm making now. I could not really have a collection of Samsung boxes, especially if they look like this. This is very boring. This is very uninteresting for a phone. And I don't know, I just like that over time, Apple's boxes kind of changed. Trying to find the best angle they could of each model. You got the front with the home screen, you got the front with the lock screen. You got the back, of course. Back in the fours, you had like this side angle view which was cool but then of course everyone remembers the ugly iphone 6 era where it was just an imprint i hate this kind this type of box does not get on my shelf but still ever since i think like s5 era samsung boxes have looked identical just changing the number which is boring so I've heard the low light on the S9 is pretty good and I currently have zero lights on right now. We're just being lit by the outdoor lights coming through the windows, otherwise known as the sun. And I thought I'd show you the new piece of equipment I got from the last batch of lights that caused quite an awkward look for lighting the first time I tried it because it was overexposed, but we figured it out now. And it also allows for this, an exact top-down view from our camera, which is what made the S9 unboxing possible. I extended this up and actually, the counterweight on the other side to keep things equal is my old camcorder that I used to record videos on from way, way, way back before Talos of Days. And also in this bag is a tape measure. Just something just heavy enough to counteract the camera at the end. And the camera allows us to shoot straight down, which is kind of neat. Now, sadly, I'm going to have to stop talking to you because the S9 is going to hit its five minute mark. So I'm going to have to hit stop real quick. And there we go. We have now stopped the recording. Why don't you come with me to the gaming room? A very good friend of mine, Ross Clark, is back in town. He's on leave right now from the Air Force. And he decided to donate to Telosiv his Xbox One S because he says he never uses it. He says he got it, thought he'd play it, but doesn't really use it too much. Got some games on it, not a fan of it really though. Kind of falling out of the whole gaming craze, which I can't blame him. I was never really that into it. But he wasn't able to sell it, so he just offered it to us. So now the gaming room has its own one terabyte Xbox One S, which was a very generous donation. You know, I'm not really a console guy, but I'll take stuff for free. So that's most of the development happening here at Telosiv, and the fact that we're going to try to sell the 15-inch MacBook Pro to our good friend Nick and Sweeney, so we can trade up to a nicer version of a 21 and a half inch iMac that would have a faster CPU, more storage than the MacBook Pro, and hopefully run quieter for the gaming room back here, so it can record things, it could even do some light gaming, while also being able to live stream at a lower volume, because this, when it's live streaming, is quite loud, and we don't really use the fact that it's mobile too much. As you can see, it's in the corner. But yeah, the gaming room's growing in tech. A 2016 MacBook Pro, 2012 iMac, of course the new gaming PC, Xbox One S, Wyatt's gaming PC, and Nick just happens to have this here. He didn't donate it to Talosif, but he likes playing it here. So it's cool to see that growing. But yeah, I haven't used my iPhone X since I unboxed the S9 Plus. It has my SIM card in it. Pretty annoying. A lot of people complain about iOS notifications and yet, as you guys saw in the unboxing video, the S9 is like dug -a -ding, dug -a -ding, dug -a -ding, dug -a ding crazy amount of sounds. I don't understand why a phone needs to have an alert sound effect and a vibration. I understand one or the other. It's either on silent or it's not on silent. Why does it need to do both? Because then when it's sitting on a table, it goes <laughs> crazy amount of sound over the top. Fingerprint reader definitely doesn't work for me. I tried it just to make sure. And the smart unlock between the iris scanning and face unlock, you have to hold very, very precisely to get it to work and it's frustrating. It doesn't show you what the iris scanner can see, so you're not exactly sure where to hold the phone face ID is just so much easier because it can see you from many different angles, whereas the iris scanner is not very intuitive. You have to hold it very specifically, but I'm gonna repeat all this in my reviews. So I won't try to bore you with it too much, but hopefully the camera looks good. You can see how this autofocus works pretty well. See all the detail in that HomePod. And then cut to far away and it can focus on all this. Pretty cool. 